Hello, everyone. I'm Carolyn, your host, and welcome to Weekly Minis, your bite-sized workshop on the hottest acro topics. A few things before we get started. You can reference all of our previous Weekly Minis and more amazing content on our Acrobatic Arts channel on YouTube. I'll put a link in the comments for you today. If you have any questions while we're live, drop them in the comments and we'll do our best to answer those for you. If you know someone who would benefit from hearing about today's topic, be a friend and click the share button on this post right now and let them know we're here. Last but not least, this episode has been recorded, pre-recorded live in advance due to our time zone realities. We're bringing the acro world together. We're so excited about today's presentation. We are so fortunate to have master teacher Kate Evans present about the back roll extension. Kate is a course conductor and examiner for both acrobatic arts and aerial arts. She's a registered RAD ballet teacher and calm dance jazz contemporary da tap and ballet teacher and has over 20 years experience teaching and running her own dance acro and aerial studio. She holds a bachelor of psychology and is a course conductor for Alexa flexibility. Kate has a passion for the biomechanics of dance, acro, aerial, and endorsing safe and progressive dance, acro, and aerial training. And that's why we're so thrilled that she's here. Kate is from the Sunshine Coast in Australia, and we're joining her there in the studio now. Welcome, Kate. Good Hi, guys. Happy to be here. We're thrilled to see you this morning, Kate. Um, I know this now this topic that you're speaking on today comes high in demand. It is a very popular topic with our teacher is it comes uh, in our level seven in our acro dance syllabus. And so I know there's a bunch of teachers out there waiting to hear with bated breath everything you have to say. So I'm going to leave you to it. I'll back out. You can take things over and we'll let you take it away. Fantastic. Well, guys, I am super excited to be here today to share our um, combined love for the back roll extension. So as we know, um, the previous progressions that lead up to this skill in level seven um, primarily come from the backward roll and the handstand facing the wall. So these two skills in isolation really require a strong push and power and momentum in the backward roll, and then a really good sense of stacking that comes from the handstand. Once your student has these two skills, we really wanna to start to progress that backward roll and the subsequent drills to incorporate the stacking element that is now required in the back roll extension in level seven. So in the back roll extension, we have lots of different options for entering this skill. There are four main different options of the skill, through a pike or a crouch with straight or pizza hands, as I like to call it, as well as the option of a curved or straight handstand once extending into the handstand position. In total, this makes eight different options. I would encourage you to try to teach all the drills and options to your students. They will assimilate with a version that best suits them. A few things to keep in mind. When doing the crouch or pizza hand version, where we can do that through a pike or through a, a tuck and pushing up into straight. This will require the students to come, come from a tuck position and shoot up into a straight position. This can be helpful to the students when they're first learning skill because it aids momentum by engaging the legs. When going through the pike down with pizza hands or pike down with straight arms, they're going to have to have a stronger sense of core control. This version involves using their hollow body shaping into a straight body shaping. And they're going to have to have a really secure muscle memory of these body patterns to be able to achieve this version. Any version that comes through the pike legs really requires that strong understanding and strong muscle memory to be able to aid the momentum because they no longer have that tuck to straight shooting of the legs. Be aware that when doing the push-up pizza hand version from tuck to straight, it does require a lot of muscular strength in the arms. And I see it muscled quite a lot. So the students tend to really muscle the skill rather than using the biomechanics of rolling through the different body shapes. So we're going to call the demos out now and have a look at these different versions. So starting off, we're going to go through the push-up pizza hand version. And off you go. So that's through a crouch. And now let's have a look through a pike. Now we're going to have a look at the different version coming through straight arms. So for this version, we can always train it using an incline for both versions. I prefer not to use the incline for the push-up version, but it's very, very helpful when we're doing the straight arm version. And off you go. So 
go through a crouch and then through straight um, pike down. Noticing that when we come through straight to pike down, she really needs to engage um, a really strong core and tight body. So to start off with, we're going to have a look at the push-up version. So a few drills that are going to assist the student to get this strong push. Remembering that those fundamental skills that the back roll extension relies on are the backward roll as well as the handstand. Previously, we would have trained that really strong push to be able to achieve the backward roll. And we would also have trained the great stacking in a handstand. So remembering that stacking in a handstand, we're looking for the feet, the knees, the hips, the chest, and the shoulders all stacked well over the wrist. So progressing these two concepts first through some drills. A few, a few ideas of drills would be base a basic handstand at the wall and in the center. Remembering that we wanna train this um, handstand with a curved and straight head position. In the back roll extension, the student is allowed to pick what head position suits them best. So we wanna make sure that we give them that option when we're training those drills. So starting off, we'll have our handstand at the wall. So straight head stand position and then curved. Noticing that the only change there is the position of the head. Once the student has that securely at the wall, we wanna straight away bring them into the center to help them to find the balance point. The balance point is really, really important for the handstand, uh, the back roll extension. Straight and curved. Whoop, try again. There it is. Good job. Another drill that I find really useful when training um, the push position is your basic push up or tricep dip. So we can train um, this skill right up from level one in little tricep dips off the knees. So let's have a look at the progression of tricep dips. So starting on the knees, this is the simplest version. We're going to cue the student to lower the body down using the triceps. From there, we're going to move the knees back farther and farther until eventually we get into a full plank position. This is training a straight line through the body and stacking. From there, once a student has that, we're going to start to elevate the legs. So you could start to elevate the legs on a stack through pike until eventually we get them up straight and vertical at the wall. So let's have a look at a handstand push up at the wall. So notice how um, Joshua has some blocks in there. This is going to help train him to gradually build up to a full handstand um, push up. And up. And then eventually he can remove the block and remove the block. So now we're down to one block. And push. So when the student's doing this drill, we really want to encourage those triceps. Um, squeezing in together. We don't want their elbows to be flailing out to the side. Eventually they'll progress that skill until they have a full handstand push up at the wall. Okay. Another drill that we can do is through headstand. So remembering that in a headstand, again, we're looking for that really secure stacking through the body. We can similarly use the blocks as we did in our handstand push ups to train from a headstand. So cueing the student to pop into a headstand position. This is a great drill for students that are struggling to control their elbows. And then we're going to push. So notice how Brandon's doing the version through tuck to straight. By using the legs, it's helping him to get power and shoot up into that handstand position. So it helps with momentum. Notice how Brandon went a little bit into his lumbar there. So that is very, very common when we're training this skill. So we really need to make sure that we're working alongside these drills, strong core control to ensure that they have that tight body. So going back, the push-up position would be a great drill to do before we got into vertical in this position. Once the student has that headstand to push up against the wall, then we can bring it into the center. Again, you can start with four blocks and gradually bring it down one after the other. So Brandon, would you like to demonstrate headstand to handstand in the center?
So that skill requires a, a lot of muscular strength in the arms, as well as coordination from bringing the legs in and then shooting up the legs and stretching the arms at the same time. Again, they need a strong core control. So the error that we saw in that skill when Brandon demonstrated was his feet over his hands. And you'll find that when training the back roll extension, that is very, very common. We'll talk more about common errors a little more, bit more towards the end, but just keep in note what that error looks like. After training this static drill, um, from training that push and training this, the strength and the stacking in the skill, we want to start to incorporate the biometrics and the biomechanics of the backward rolling in the skill. Now, this is where it becomes very, very difficult because not only are we asking the student to be stacked and straight, but we're adding in momentum. So finding the correct time to hit the handstand is tricky for the students. So we want to incorporate a few drills to be able to help the student to find stacked whilst rolling. Now, when training um, the biomechanics of the skill, we can not only train these going backwards, but we can also train these going forwards. And I would encourage you to do lots of different drills going in lots of different ways with lots of different methods of movement. So the student has to find stack position quickly. Being able to find stack position quickly comes from strong muscle memory. So the more drills that you do to train stack, the more they're going to be able to find the position quickly, which is what we require in a back roll extension. So let's have a look at a few drills to help to train with that. Now, at this point is where we want to have the conversation with our students that instead of doing the backward roll the way we've trained it in level three, we now want to think about bringing the feet to 12 o'clock. So let's have a look at what a backward roll in level three would look like. Remembering that in level three, we're cueing the students to roll over into that highest possible position up on the shoulders and then bring the feet over into ball pose and push strongly to recover. So we're bringing the feet to ball pose in a backward roll. So let's take a look at the backward roll and strong push and recover. Now, when we're training a back roll extension, we need to train, uh, change this concept a little bit. Instead of the feet coming over to the floor, we want to cue the feet to go to 12 o'clock. This becomes very, very important for stacking. Often you'll see students do back roll extension and shoot the legs out into plank. This happens because they're shooting out too late. So we need to cue that 12 o'clock position of the feet. Um, and that's the little change in the biomechanics of the skill from a backward roll to a back roll extension. So let's have a look at a few drills that are going to assist the student to add in that movement as well as combine it with the stacking. Starting off first with a backward roll to headstand. Now this is a great option for the students to get the momentum of traveling backwards and find stacking without requiring the strong push and muscular strength of the arms. So that can be done to a tuck, it can be done to a straddle. It's also a nice variation that you can include um, in your transitions. Next up, we're gonna have a look at a backward roll to a plank. Now, this is a great drill to get momentum as well as push. So the drill that we just did was momentum and stacking. And this one's going to work on the strength and the strong push that's required whilst coupling it with backward rolling. I also really like that drill because it encourages the student to find the tight straight line through the body. Once they have that straight line through the body in a plank, then eventually we can gradually move that up to find their vertical stacked handstand. From there, we're going to have a look at a backward roll to a tuck position with the feet at 12 o'clock and encourage a push. So now we've got the push drilled in, we've got the verticality drilled in, and we're going to try and get the student to add them together just in a tuck um, sort of candle position. And off you go. And push. And try again a little bit more push. Noticing the placement of her feet at 12 o'clock. Now, if she was to do that drill and her feet go over her head, when she extends out to try and hit the handstand, she's gonna go out more into a plank position. From there, we can develop that skill and change it from a tuck position into a candle position. So to be able to achieve that stacking in the candle position, we really need them to have the opening through the upper back and shoulders to get that high candle, coupled with a really strong push. So let's have a look at a backward roll to candle with a push. Okay, so we're really looking for that stacking and straight line through the body. Once your student has a good understanding of where that is and they've covered those drills, we're going to start to encourage them to continue the roll. 
So a great way to do that is to take them to a needle first. In the needle position, what they can do is take over one leg first to assist them to be able to push. So if your student is working on their strength still, but they don't have that strong push, this is a great one to help them find verticality with a little bit of assistance in the pushing. From there, we're going to take the student through backward roll, pushing up into a tuck handstand. So this is a great starting position. Um, remembering that we trained this stacking position against the wall in the tuck to shoot to straight. So we're going to first try to get them to find a tuck handstand and find the balance for a split second. And then we'll progress this further up to straight. And off you go. Try again. Core. Better, good. So notice the first time he didn't find that tight body. The second time it was a tighter position. So from there, we're now going to progress the student to go through tuck and shoot up to straight. So combining everything together, verticality, push, and momentum, as well as stacking. Well done. So now we're going to have a look at some other drills that we can use that are associated with a different um, entrance and the other options into the skill. So this is where we're going to do, go through a pike down with straight arms, okay? So we can do a pike down version with straight arms or a crouch down version with straight arms. But the mechanics of this skill is slightly different to a push. So we're going to use our drills a little bit differently when we're cueing the student to keep their arms straight. When we're using straight arms, we really require the student to have a very strong understanding of their body shaping, their upper body shaping. So we're, in this, we're talking about a hollow into a straight position. Now, essentially, we've already trained this very quick change from a hollow to a straight position. Remembering back to level four, when we do our handstand to forward roll. So in our handstand to forward roll, we have the student hit a straight handstand position and then hollow to tip, tuck and roll. So let's have a quick look at the mechanics of a handstand forward roll. Straight, tuck, roll. A back roll extension with straight arms is essentially the reverse of this skill. So from level four, we have been reverse training the biomechanics of a back roll extension with straight arms. And I think that's really cool. So what we're going to ask the students to do now is reverse it. So instead of hitting straight, then pulling hollow to tip, tuck and roll, we're going to cue the student to hit hollow, then pull to straight and step out. So. To be able to achieve this, they really need to have a strong sense of muscle memory and a quick, fast twitch movement pattern from hollow to straight, as well as finding that stacked body position. So a few drills that we can do to train that before we even get into the biomechanics of the skill is purely laying on the floor and training the reverse hollow into straight. So this is a great one that you can introduce much earlier in their training before they even get up to the skill. The beauty of this skill is that it keeps the hips in stacked alignment. As opposed to doing a regular hollow where they dish up the legs a little bit, here we're asking the students to keep extension through the front of the hip, but work their upper back and shoulders and pull to hollow. So straight and then hollow and then straight. So in the back roll extension, we're cueing a hollow first and then a straight. We can do exactly this skill with the curved uh, hand, head position. So if we we're going to do that, we'd say pull hollow and then straight, go into straight with curved head. Okay, depending on the option that your student would like to do. Once they have that on the floor and they can do it quickly, so once that you do it slowly, you want to work it up and make it much quicker, we can then take it to the wall in a vertical position, which is a lot harder. So taking it to the wall, we're going to cue the student to pop in, find their stacking. We want them to be quite close to the wall for this one. So she's going to start off with a straight head position. Then we're going to cue hollow and straight and hollow and straight. And we can do exactly the same thing if the student's choosing to go into the curved head position. So hollow and straight with eyes, hollow and straight with eyes. In this position, we're encouraging the students to keep that straight line through the hips. And that's very, very important for protecting the lumbar once they get into the skill. Some other drills that we can do for the straight arm version is a drilling a backward roll into a pre-forward bend. So when we do straight arm drilling at my studio, we often use an incline mat because it requires so much more strength and control. I find that they tend to tip into their lumbar a little bit. 
So while they're learning the skill, I would encourage you to use your incline until they have that strength built up. So let's have a look at the backward roll through straight arms to pre-forward bend. The use of the incline aids in momentum to help her get over. Noticing when she's using her straight arms, her hands are tipped in this way a little bit, okay? That enables the student to roll down over the fingers and through the arms into her candle and then push over. From there, we're going to progress that drill and ask the student to roll backwards with straight arms and land in a plank. From there, we're going to progress it even further by introducing some stacks or some sort of height for the student. So once we know the student can hit plank with a nice tight body, we're going to try to encourage her to aim a little bit higher, a little bit higher, a little bit higher until she gets vertical. So we can use stacks to do that. And we're gradually going to build up the stack um, with the student as they progress it up to their fully stacked handstand. And off you go. And then let's add a stack. So it's always encouraging the student to maintain that tight body position. And off you go, Freya. And then one more stack to get those feet elevated above the hips. And you can keep going with the stacks um, up and up and up. And eventually that will help to get your student up into a straight position. And off you go. Good job. So once they've done um, all of those drills and they've got that nice straight position of the arms, again, remembering that we want them to be pushing out of their shoulders and securing their tight body in the chest. We're now going to drill the straight body up and ask the student to try to find vertical. Now, what you'll find is that when some students do this through the pike down is they'll take their legs through pike and then pull, using the legs to pull up and whip up with momentum. Now, this often happens when they're first learning this, the skill. We want to try to eliminate, though, as they progress through. Sometimes when they use their legs to whip themselves up into straight, they tend to use their lumbar to do that. So once your student starts to understand what they're doing, we really want to eliminate that whip up so that they're hitting the candle vertical and then pushing straight up from there. Remembering that at the start, we were talking about that position of the feet. So even in this skill with straight arms, we really still need to encourage them to hit that position, candle with the feet at 12 o'clock, and from there roll up maintaining verticality. If they don't maintain verticality, then something's going to give somewhere along the line, okay? So keeping an eye on your student's body and verticality throughout the skill will help you to find the errors that are happening and correct them. So let's have a look at the full skill through straight arms um, into handstand. So this can be done through a crouch as well as through pike position. Good job, and through crouch. Straight arms through crouch. So that skill is quite difficult when it comes to strength, but I would encourage you to use your um, incline mat. Another way that you can drill this is very similar to the handstand forward roll with the use of stacks. Now, instead of putting um, the hands on the floor, we're going to start the student on the stacks and then cue them to roll off the stacks. So instead of rolling onto the stacks like we did in the handstand forward roll, we're going to purely reverse it and use exactly the same drill to assist them to get their um, back roll extension. So starting on the stacks, up on the stacks, up on the stacks. Yep. So notice how the edge of the stack comes right across her upper back and shoulders there. What we're doing is we're lessening the amount that she needs to get to vertic vertical. So once they can do it with a high stack, we can gradually reduce it down even further. So taking a stack away, It's really important that you have measured it out for the student before you go so that you know that um, they're long enough. So we've got the stack long ways right now. If you had a little tyke, then you might wanna turn it the other way um, because it needs to hit in the right place to assist them with this drill. And eventually the student's gonna be able to go down a stack, down a stack, down a stack until they can do it on the floor. So that's a great way to progress them from the incline and reduce that help 
and assistance um, as you go down. Finally, another sort of teaching aid that you can do once your student understands the body shaping, has the strength and has good stacking is spot the skill. So when spotting the skill, really what we're trying to do is just give them a small amount of assistance and help them to maintain verticality. Now, a little bit thing to be kept cautious of. If your student's doing a tuck up, we, we don't really wanna be spotting that version. Um, when they do the tuck from the tuck to straight, often you can cop a foot in the face. So I cue my students to go through pike when I'm giving them a little bit of assistance with spotting. So I'll show you how to spot it. So we can go through a crouch or a pike, but we really want the student not to go through the tuck position. So I'm gonna stand just a little bit away from Joshua and um, ask him to go. He's gonna go nice and slowly so that I can time it for him. And go and up. Okay, so just providing a little bit of assistance, one hand either side of his thighs. Once he gets that feeling and understands that momentum, then I can gradually decrease my assistance. That's really, that's a really good way to help your student if they're shooting out too far, um, like entering the skill too quickly. So let's have a look at some common um, mistakes that we see when we're looking at the back roll extension. So we've already seen a few. Um, the main one that I often see is when the feet are over the hands and they hinge in the lumbar, okay? So let's have a look at that error again. So you can see Brandon didn't find stacked and he threw it into his lumbar there. Let's have a look at the other error that we see is when they shoot their legs too late. So this is common when they take their feet too far behind their body and they don't find 12 o'clock. All of this affects the timing. So what we're really trying to cue the students to do is to actually open out just a little bit before. So remembering back to um, the biomechanics of the skill, when, we're gonna, when we go backwards into the roll, we're going to hit hollow at five past and then pull to straight at 12 o'clock. What that means is that they need to hit their hollow position a bit before stacked. So that error that we just saw, the student is hitting hollow too late and therefore her feet are shooting out past her body, okay? So let's have a look at what it would look like if you hit the hollow position too early. And that's when you hit into the lumbar and roll back down again. So you can see she doesn't have enough momentum to be able to go up. So often when I'm doing this with my students, I'll cue them with a now, okay? So let's have a look at how that works. So let's just have the skill and I'll cue you with a now. And the now is going to be when they want to hit the vertical position. Ready Freya and now. So noticing that I cue her just before her feet get to 12 o'clock. And that's going to help her to be able to find stacked because we want to hit it at five, two. So that is a lot of different drills that you can use um, to support your students through their back roll extension. Once they have their back roll extension, then we want to progress them even further into some variations. So let's have a look at a few little variations that you can give to your student once they have the main concepts of the back roll extension. So in this skill, what we're going to get the student to do is a handstand forward roll and then go into a back roll extension. And off you go. Thank you, Joshua. And now we're gonna have a look at a back tuck into a back roll extension. And now we're gonna have a look at a back roll extension into a uh, headstand. So there's lots of different variations you can do. You can do back roll extension into handstand walking. Are we doing that one? Joshua, give it a go. We really need a strong sense of stacking and control on this one though. So lots of different ideas you can do with your student once they have the body shaping and the stacking required for the back roll extension. It is a tricky skill and we need to make sure that we're training up that strength and control right from the start. Remembering that the biomechanics are trained from um, way back when we start to teach rock and roll um, in primary and our little handstands against the wall in level one. So progressing nicely through the syllabus will ensure your student has the strength and control and the technique and alignment to be able to achieve this skill. Remember to always support um, your skills with drills 
to increase the student's muscle memory so they can find their positions quickly and efficiently and um, get into this more complex coordination of the back row extension in level seven. So thank you so much guys for tuning in today. I hope you've got lots of information out of our little mini and I wish you all the very best in um, working this with your students in the classroom. Oh my goodness, Kate, and uh, to all your dancers, that was amazing. Um, I am sitting here just thinking what a gift of time, not just time, but all the skills, the drills. And I like how you reinforced it for us at the end. And I think um, that whole uh, training was really, uh, uh, I guess what you could call a reinforcement of that progressive skill training that we do. You wrapped it up nicely. I don't need to say it again, but um, so many drills and skills that they can work through building up to this uh, level seven uh, skill. And um, thank you so, so much for that. Truly amazing. Thank you to all all of the dancers if they want to come and take a bow thank you for having us today thank you as this airs right now it is three thank you so much everyone you are beautifully amazing they're bowing, but I think the camera's probably on me because I'm the one talking. Um, I was going to say it is 3 a.m. as this airs uh, in North America. It's about 9 a.m. Mountain Standard Time, 11 a.m. Eastern Time. But in, in Australia, it's 3 a.m. So they're all sleeping. But we hope that if you have any questions for Kate, um, that you will consider those. And we will do our best to respond to those um, over the next day or so. So please be, feel free to put those in the comment section below. Um, I also wanted to just add that... Um, this is a skill uh, from level seven of the Acro Dance syllabus, and there are further notes and video, although I, I think Kate covered it all, in our Acro Dance Resource Center. If you'd like more information about teacher training certification, where you can learn more about not only the fundamentals of these skills, but the spotting tips, the tricks, the biomechanics, all of the things really that, that Kate talked about, that you can get a fundamental understanding of that information that can help you teach in the studio, not to mention our digital syllabus with the Acrodance Resource Center. Run, don't walk to acrobatics.com, acrobaticarts.com and click on teacher training. We have a number of courses online and in person that are available to you and may be coming to your area. This summer is a perfect time to level up teachers. We know that it's been a long couple of years. Spots are going fast. This is your time. Once again, thank you, Kate, and to to all of your students and beautiful dancers. Thank you for being so prepared and bringing us such an extraordinary training. Uh, thank you teachers for joining us for this weekly mini. Uh, join us next week when we'll be back in the studio again with master teacher Jennifer Marcus of Baton Arts with a baton twirling skill for us. You can learn more about acrobatic arts and our programs at acrobaticarts.com. Join us again next week. See you then.